Our topic to start off the podcast is the Japanese prison system. Has anybody any idea of what the Japanese prison system might be like? Orderly. Have you seen anything? Have you watched anything? Respectful. Okay, isn't that like on Netflix? Aren't they the ones that dance? No, that's, that's a Filipino. Philippines. Yeah, it's a Filipino one. Because I, I didn't watch the show. I just saw uh, prison people dancing. You said prison, so I figured maybe that's it. He didn't say dancing. She didn't <laughs> say dancing. No, she no. said what, what Japanese prisons are like. Yeah, and CJ like, saw I, I, on Netflix. I saw some prisoners like doing a dance yeah. in like, um, aerobics. Yeah. I thought maybe that's the Japanese system. No. Ah. The Japanese system... Now, let me know what you think of this. I'm in two minds. So they there's a there's actually a, a documentary on prime video and i think it's called prison life justice in japan it was made in 2020 i watched it and i was like oh goodness gracious okay this is what you can expect if you go to prison in japan so good food prisoners <laughs> prisoners mu- no so there is not good food prisoners okay. must be silent at all times unless they're in the designated sort of leisure hours. They are not even allowed to speak to each other unless they put up their hand and ask a guard for permission. If the guard allows it, they can speak to someone quickly and it has to be like, let's say this is during work hours, has to be work related or whatever. And it has to be in Japanese. (coughs) So you can't just, you know how you see those prison shows and the inmates are just, you know, chatting away to each other hanging out no no it's silence silence they're really structured and before they do anything they have to do this workout session so like they come to breakfast before they can eat they do a little workout and then they eat and then they go to work before they start work they do a workout everything they do they have this like little um, workout activity so it's structured it's it is extremely extremely structured. Mm. A lot of the places though they have the, the you know that special matting and the futons and they have to fold it a certain way every day. But um, if let's say they've they've uh, done something wrong, for instance, um, they get told to sit in the middle of the floor. In general, in general, they get told to sit in the middle of the floor, and you can either cross your legs. Or you can kneel. You know how like you can kneel and then your heels are on your bum? Yeah. Yeah, it's like that sort of squat kneel thing. So this is this is normal. So they don't have to be in trouble for this. This is their afternoon thing that they can do. They can sit and they can, whilst they're in that position, they're allowed to write or read or just do nothing, be with their own mind. Now, if they get bored of that, like some people go crazy and they go... <laughs> Get me out. Like, you know, they might just stand up or like go to the door and knock on the door and say, ah, I've had enough. Then they're not allowed to read anymore. They're not allowed to write. They get taken to another room, which is kind of like a padded cell almost. And they get told to sit in the middle of the floor and they have nothing for four hours straight. (laughs) Right? As punishment for lashing out. For punishment. Yeah, because thought- they're not supposed to speak when they're in their sitting time. So you sit, you're either with your thoughts, you read, or you write. It seems no like sound. an adult preschool. <laughs> what does it take to go to prison in Japan? Because this sounds like a torture center. It is a torture. Well, like a okay. psychological warfare. Is That's this the maximum thing. prison? This is the is thing. this maximum or is this minimum? I think this is, this is, uh, this is I think this is actually quite... <laughs> across the board fairly standard i uh, this particular documentary followed one i don't know if it was maximum or minimum i'm not sure i'll have to double check what's that. the theory behind that now their their theory well, is they, they, they have no gang violence well no so you number one also, but again, look, if i'm there the first thing i'm doing is because is i'll see if this is if this is standard practice then you know as a citizen this is what it's like and all that so when i know that i'm going to prison i'm starting my learning and then when I get there, I'm going to be like, look, I'm well on my way to learning this. Um, I encourage, this is when I, when I get my opportunity to speak, I encourage all of you to learn this. Um, I'll make sure this book is in the library so we can all learn from it. Um, and then I would create a system of prisoners who all know sign language. <laughs> and then uh, we don't have to worry you about talking. You can't make any gestures. <laughs> no, but so- if, if you're going to wrestle in a Japan, why wouldn't you just hop over the gate? What? What gate? 
I think he's he's assuming. Prisoners in. Yeah, I think he's assuming I'm a giant and Japan's <laughs> oh. built for me. <laughs> you know, you I had was everyone. So you had there. everyone. I was like, gate? Jump over I the was gate? So confused. No, they've they got normal prisons. I, I got your siege. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's scary? That you get each other. This is what's scary now. <laughs> that is so. Now. They ha- when they're walking places like if they mar- <laughs> if they march to their work sites, which is obviously unpaid as well, they march to their work sites and they're attached by a cord. They're not allowed to look any guards in the eye. As I said, they have to speak Japanese because the uh, guards are worried that if they're speaking another language, they're plotting something. So they always have to speak Japanese. So you see them, they, they raise their arm and then the guard will say yes. And, and then they'll say, oh, in their language, can I, can I just ask him a question or whatever? And they got their long working hours. They come back. They get. They do get. I think two hours, one and a half or two hours, or a night where they're able to. It's like free time in their room where they can watch a TV or whatever. Um, but it, it's just crazy. So, for instance, they have old women in there. The old women have a program. They are about re uh, re. What rehabilitation rehabilitation they have old women right they put them in this program and then they do things where they might bring in babies like you know the little babies that are like human like but not and they teach them how to take care of the baby so that when they're out of prison they can help their daughter-in-laws or their daughters raise the baby and stuff like that now this is the strange thing, right? If my mother, if my mother-in-law was in prison, I'm not sure if I'd want her raising my children. <laughs> well, true. Now there's this annual prison festival. I don't know how many jails have this, <laughs> but there's one in, at the Fuchu Prison. It's called the Fuchu Prison Festival. Mm. Every single year, the government puts this thing on, and it's a huge celebration. So we're talking family. It's like a big family day out. The kids, everyone loves it. They look forward to it. They come. You can dress up as a prison guard. You can have your photos taken. You get to try the prison food on the prison trays, except, by the way, that's false because there was an ex-prisoner that had been there for, like, years. He was European, and he came along to this festival for the sake of the documentary, and he was like, this actually tastes good. This is nothing like what we get. And he's like, how can you have a celebration here when there's atrocities happening in there or like like the psychological warfare and everything happening in there? They, they just see it as our prison system is amazing. Look at our prison guards. The prison guards are wonderful. And there's all rides and it's like a fate, <laughs> but huge <laughs> with like a million people or something crazy show up. Could you Would you go so to like the-, the prison day out? <laughs> No. And it's right in front of the jail. So the jail's there. Like in the, it's, it's on their front garden sort of area, like the front the front of the building. So, so they don't have to worry about decorations. <laughs> got to set. Like this, this whole idea of their prison system and the way it's run and everything, beyond the aspects of using it for rehabilitation, do you think it's also that way as a deterrent for crime? Yeah. yeah. Like, as a, look, this is, you're going to have to deal with this if you do something drastic enough to end up here. Yeah. But do they end up normal? Uh, like, are they going to end up normal when they come out? No. no. That's, why, that's why I'm thinking, like, I feel like it's not good for rehabilitation. Like, you're just going to create crazy people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then release them back into the world. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. So, what but happened I, is... I, I guess it's a good deterrent. Like, they don't want to do crime. It is. Now, Jap- Jap- Japanese people are used to rules. Mm. Japan has a lot of rules and they're unspoken too, rules. Too and, many rules. And they're, the society just fall into these rules. They they respect the rules, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Minuta warning. Minuta warning. Minuta warning. Thank you. So, the, the actual prison itself has these rules. Now, there was one... The, what This was a big feature of the documentary there was this gentleman i think he was from i can't remember i want to say israel but i can't remember and he was locked up in japan 
He was released and found not guilty, but this is quite common. What they do is they then charge you on another and another thing you're guilty of, even if it's a lesser charge or whatever, because they want to get you back into jail. So even if you release, they'll try and find something else to pin you, get you back into jail. What? Anyway, so they released him. Now, as one of their rules, which usually Japanese people would adhere to, the courts told him, okay, you're free, you can go home, but you'll have to come back to court. Oh, you have to come back. He did another 22 days after his first three years or something like that. They went back in for his 22 days. Then he was released and then I think they were trying to get him back in again or whatever, but he was released, sent home. You have to come back into court, don't go anywhere. Well, he skipped the country, didn't he? Yeah. He skipped the country and went back home. And he had a press conference back home and he's like, I'm not guilty of these crimes. And there was a Japanese reporter there and the Japanese reporter was like we just don't understand we just want to talk to him he ha- he knew the rules he was supposed to stay why did he leave you know this is not good this is not good <laughs> like and he couldn't they just couldn't believe why would someone go against the rules oh, which man. was interesting um of course he didn't want to go back to prison uh, I looked up um because because like when we're having the conversation you can't talk to each other and you can't start riots. You can't. There's no gang affiliations, whatever. So I started looking up if there's been any jail escapes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did it say? And only one person came up. Yoshi Shira Shiratori. Yeah. That's the only person that came up. Oh, unless that's a that's a. a no, it's a, actually it's a. No, it's just one person. Oh, okay. Well, this guy, I I remember his name now. I don't remember. I had a look. Mr. I don't know how you pronounce it. Gerson? G-H-O-S-N. He was the one that fled. So he was free on bail, fled in a crate used to house audio equipment. And he was awaiting trial on charges under for underreporting income, which he denies. Um, Another lady also said that it is common for them to force you to accept a crime that even if you're innocent what the hell so they just sure? wear you down they wear and wear and wear and wear well, but, and wear but, but you down but police do that in every country they do they do but yeah, it's commonplace true. there so yeah it doesn't I'm quite say, sure it'd be commonplace in a lot of other like, countries as well where there's four I, people been worn down to admitting guilt when they haven't done it yeah oh yeah no 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 I agree agree but it's and and by the way, this lady that was in prison, I think she was in prison for something like oh, so, so she got sent to prison because her house or her apartment caught fire. She got out, the husband got out, and they saved the son, but she couldn't save the daughter. There was, she couldn't get to the daughter to save her, and they accused her of deliberately lighting the fire to kill the daughter, and she got sent to prison. And she was made to confess after being worn down. And she was in grief and sent to prison. She was there for something crazy like, I don't know, 18 years or something. And then she was freed on, she she was freed by human rights people, I don't know. And she got given compensation of $750,000 or equivalent of. But she, yeah, she, it's just crazy. They just were like, you did it, you did it, you did it to kill your daughter, didn't you? Tell us you did it, you did it. But it's weird. I feel like if you were walk, to walk into a Japanese prison, you'd be like, oh, wow, this is nice. Look at the rooms. Oh, they're so neat and tidy. They're clean because they are quite clean. Oh, everyone's really orderly. But, and you don't get those gang and you wouldn't feel like intimidated walking in, but it's the psychological breakdown stuff Yeah. instead. I, I, I just want to jump back to Dev's um, Yoshi... Shiratori? Yeah. Because I'm on his Wikipedia page. Now, I went onto his Wikipedia because when you Google him, like, there's a lot of, a lot of articles and things about him. Yeah. He's this notorious, and I'm like, what, who is this person? So I go on his Wikipedia page and there's a section called Prison Breaks and you open it up and it has like a, a very, very short paragraph, couple sentences about like his working life and how he got into crime, basically. And then it just says, first prison break, second prison break, third prison break, fourth prison break. <laughs> Who is this guy? Oh my goodness. One of them 
and I, I want to bring this up just because I feel like the imagery is brilliant. One of them, he escaped through the food slot in the cell door. What? what? How skinny is the dude? <laughs> like what? what? Or, or, or how big is the food slot? <laughs> That's absolutely mad. Because I saw like a description. They basically said like he's he's the Harry Harry Houdini of Japanese prisons. Um, Harry There's one here where it shows so a picture first, depicting him escaping through the skylight. <laughs> so his first, um, first one, he watched a guard for months and ended up picking a lock of his cell. The second escape was uh, he escaped by climbing the walls of his cell and exiting through that skylight. Um, <clears throat> it said that he climbed up every night to loosen the vent leading out leading this outside. Guy. His third one was going through the food slot in his cell door. Um, and the fourth one, uh, he dug his way out of the prison, making a tunnel in the floor. Wow. Do they have Shawshank Redemption in there? You had an idea? <laughs> That's not, like, they need to make a film about this guy if there's not one already, because... Oh, they'd, they'd be one. What's his name? Oh, what's his name again? Yoshi Shiratori. I'm going to look it up. No, that's his name, Japanese jail escape artist. This is why the prisons are the the way that they are, because of this guy. <laughs> this guy ruined it for everyone. Yeah, but in the end, it says that... Well, so hold he... on, he ruined prison for everyone. Yes. <laughs> prison, he ruined it. Yes. So it was basically it was Disneyland. It was, a, it was a dance party beforehand. Yes. For getting jiggy with it. Yes. Na, 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 na. Yeah. Right? And then Yoshi Yako whatever. Yeah. Stuffed it up. Yes. There's always one, isn't there? Always one. <laughs> now, get this. After his fourth escape, he was free for a year. Then he was offered a cigarette by a police officer at a park. And because he was like, oh, wow. He was moved by his kindness. He went and admitted to that police officer that he was an escaped convict and offered to be turned in, right? Because of a so cigarette. Then, yeah, because he was like, wow, this police officer offered me a cigarette. And then he was tried once again and they revoked his death sentence and instead sentenced him to 20 years in prison. He requested to be go to go to that one that prison I was just saying, Fuchu prison in Tokyo. Yeah. And it was granted and then he was released on good behavior after 14 years. 